Okay, so again, uh, lesson eight. The goal is to introduce telegraphing and for strategies uh, for use against the uh, common Chinese or reverse grip. I say Chinese a lot because that's what I learned it as. You know, I don't mean to be uh, racist. I don't mean to make any, I'm not, I'm not racist. I'm not that racist. Uh, so, so anyways, <laughs> I don't mean to make any inferences. In today's, you know, uh, politically correct yeah, yeah, freaking yeah. society. I don't believe you know, that shit. Please, you know, don't take any offense if you're Chinese or if you think you're Chinese enough <laughs> or if you just want to be Chinese enough and now you think I'm offending you. Sorry, I'm not. I'm just old school, brother. So anyways, uh, so let's start talking about this. Ba -ba. Let's start off with environmental advantages. Very similar to uh, weapons of opportunity. Okay, so uh, uh, used cars, bars, chairs, trash cans, tables to get something between you and the weapon if possible. Uh, you can use smaller items to attack from greater distance by throwing them or like with our guy with the tripod and the camera, keeping it between you and the uh, threat. That's more weapons of opportunity. Uh, Let's see, yeah, I have that video out there which several of you probably uh, became aware of my channel because of uh, a real knife attack is likely to look like this. I mean, I have like uh, 350,000 views on that thing or something. I, I lost a lot of views because I like redid something on it, but it might be half a million views for that thing now. So anyways, I get a lot of advice from guys who watch that video. When I saw the video originally, like the guys had a long thing down the bottom. Do not comment to this video. You know, you basically don't know what the hell you're doing. You know, just shut up and look at the video and realize that knife fighting is dangerous. That's what they had like underneath there. Yeah. But it, I mean, it was like, it would have been a, a a thousand word essay that they basically put this down here. I mean, you know, they obviously have seen enough trolls over the years. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, <clears throat> so I get a lot of advice from these armchair warriors telling me how, you know, that attack should be defended. And, uh, uh, the first bit of advice I would give, you know, to that thing, and I, I've had a couple guys say this. I mean, this guy, you know, he wraps the jacket up and puts it on his arm. I mean, he should have used the jacket to just throw it at the guy's face. Right. And now you want to kick him, you know, come up and kick him in the balls. He can't see your foot coming. You know, this jacket's in his face, and you're stepping forward with one leg, mm -hmm. and that's now getting the other leg caught, and then boom, you come through with a full kick right into his groin. But you got it. I mean, I've had a lot of guys just kick the knife out of his hand. Yeah, that's going to work because he's not going to see the kick coming. He's not going to slash your yeah. shin bone. And your Van you Damme. Know. Yeah, yeah. And, you got and that your, perfect crescent yeah. kick or whatever. And your Van Damme or, you know, uh, what I have another guy we had something about sometime and I said, uh, listen, you're not, uh, you're not Anderson Silver. Silver. Yeah. You're not Anderson Silver. The guy said, just give him a front kick to the face. Yeah, yeah. The timing and the uh, expertise were required for that. You and that's know, a uh, perfect slash to the inside of your thigh. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's uh, just exposing the femoral artery. Uh, so, anyways, uh, so I mean, if you were going to kick him, the first thing you want to do is get that jacket in his face. If you were going to hit him, the first thing you want is that jacket in his face. If you were going to run away from him, the first thing you would want is the jacket in his face. So, the million dollar answer, if you think there's a answer for what you should do in that video. It's throw the fucking jacket in his face. Yeah. That's what you should do. Whoop, in his face, and now you can go through anything you want to do because he's going to have to react to that. There's no doubts about it. And it's going to be, it's going to open a, a huge amount of time, like half a second. Yeah. And a half a second at that point, if, again, like our family up in Alaska, you've thought about this shit right. and you've thought, what would I do in this situation? And you have some tools in your toolbox, you know, that would be very outstanding way to use your environmental uh, advantage. I got a typo up here. So again, you know, if you have no knife fighting skills whatsoever, just throwing something at a guy is by far going to do a lot better than uh, most of those one step stuff they teach in the karate class for this guy coming at you with this attack where you're going to go like this and you're going to block the first one. You're going to go to grab it and his hand's not going to be there and now you're going to be in this position when he comes with the next eight 
and now he's going to grab your leg, take you down, and you're just completely screwed. You would have been better off just taking your jacket and throwing your jacket in his face and taking a chance to see if the adrenaline's going to kick in and let you run faster than this guy. That's the answer to this equation. So anyways, you wouldn't know how many, how many times I just, because to deal with trolls, I say that you know, all comments have to be approved by me when I'm putting a video up. Yeah. So usually it's just remove, remove, remove. I usually don't put anything up there unless I just really feel like writing something back because I've just had like a hundred idiots say something. And now the hundred and one idiot is saying the exact same thing. So I'll like belittle him on the thing. Yeah. Or if somebody puts something intelligent up there, especially something, uh, Something complimentary to me. <laughs> <laughs> some of the stroke your ego. Yeah, that stuff. That stuff will get up there. So, anyways, even some of the stuff that where people stroke my ego, it's just like it's just too much smoke up my ass, yeah. and I just have to fart it out and hit remove. So, anyways, uh, let's see. Uh, so again, uh, throw this in his face, spin the fighting center, and then use uh, the distraction to escape. Okay, so now let's talk about telegraphing. Telegraphing. Oftentimes, our opponent will make a movement that will make us aware of the impending attack. Uh, this will allow us to anticipate the attack and get moving before it is too late. Uh, knowing what we are going to do in advance will help us capitalize on this even more. Again, knowing what we are going to do in advance, which is really what this course was about. Yeah. I mean, yes, it was. A, it, it was again. It was the training triad. Training triad is what we we're talking about. You know, we started with weapon skills, then we started with went to strategy, and then we went to mindset. Okay, we, we covered all those things in here. So again, I didn't talk about telegraphing too much earlier, did I? Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I didn't want to talk about telegraphing is because I was so worried about getting you uh, to attack in a manner where you wouldn't telegraph, and that's why I didn't want telegraph in the back of your mind. So that's why we're bringing telegraphing in here. And basically, you know, uh, what, what are those things called? There's like attack cues. That's not the word I'm looking for, but there's attack cues. You know, the guy looking here, the guy, the facial grooming, you know, that type of stuff. Uh, the pumped up chest, you know, this type of stuff. All those things mean an attack is pending. But what we're talking about in telegraphing is he's actually throwing, he's in the action of actually throwing the attack. So that's what we're talking about when we're doing telegraphing. Okay, so anyways, uh, the less skilled the attacker, the more likely the telegraphing movement will be. Oftentimes, uh, before moving forward, the weight will be shifted back and down, or the attacking limb will be moved back uh, before the attack. Uh, this is known as cocking, as in cold cocking, cold cocking someone, uh, as, uh, as in the way a uh, hammer on old day revolvers had to be moved into the set position before the trigger could be engaged to allow the hammer to move forward. So you gotta cock it back, pull the trigger, boom, now the hammer comes forward. So that's where this, uh, would that be an analogy? Or would that be a metaphor? I think it's the, the term cocking came from. Yeah, so anyways, uh, uh, that would happen before uh, the gun could be fired. So again, that's uh, why we call it uh, cocking uh, the stuff. So anyways, uh, either telegraph movement will give us a chance to rush in and jam the attack which would be coning now, uh, before it can begin its action towards us. Joy, so you really gotta just chill out, okay? Stay inside. Oftentimes, we will be able to beat him to the punch by beginning and completing our technique before he is able to. Okay, so again, you know, this guy's going like this, and if you're nice and smooth, boom, you're on top of this guy before he can hit you, okay? That's what we're talking about here. But again, you gotta practice this stuff, you gotta be ready for it. Uh, and that's one of the things that we do specifically practice in the hand-to-hand -hand course. Here we did, we've done coning. So, I mean, we're going to be on the attack before this guy even starts moving. Uh, if he happens to start doing something like this as we're attacking, well, he's just screwed, you know. So, skilled attackers will telegraph their intentions less by having more direct movements and by hiding their intentions with feints and other deceptive movements. And again, that's what this is. This is deception when I look over here and then I cold cock you. That was one of my old favorites. You gotta look over there, get this guy's attention where you're looking, bam, you hit him with that cold cock, boom, they drop like a big bag of rocks. 
Okay, so anyways, uh, want more direct movements and by hiding uh, their intentions with feints and other deceptive movements. However, all attacks must begin at the shoulders, hips, or legs if the threat is outside of close contact distance. Again, what are we talking about? Close contact distance is I can easily reach out and touch without having to move any part of my body. That's where close contact position is. Contact is anywhere where I can, with one step, I can get you, okay? So uh, again, uh, with this uh, close contact, you know, it's, uh, it's gonna be a, uh, just an arm punch if he doesn't use his legs or his hips in uh, delivering that strike. So again, uh, in a knife fight, we want to gauge our interval relative to the threat's lead foot and the commencement of his attacks from his shoulders. So really, you know, you always heard this stuff, look at his eyes, look at his eyes, look at his eyes, look at his eyes, don't look at his eyes, okay? First off, you might piss somebody off. I mean, you're going to be in his face and you're going to, you know, sometimes it's hard to talk calmly when you're in a situation uh, where a fight may start. So you really got to work on your breathing and you really got to try to talk normally okay it's hard to do so you have to keep yourself calm okay this is stuff you need to be thinking about at that instance not what am i going to do when he's attacked that stuff needs to be uh, uh a conditioned reflex okay because you've done reps over and over and over and over and over so anyways uh uh remain calm breathe and bring your view down from his eyes down to right about here it's going to be easy to pick up the shoulders doing something and again if this guy makes a little flinch and you make a big jump off to the side is there a problem with that no he's got to redo the whole OODA loop to get back at you and in that moment you know he may have a chance to start thinking wow this guy is really ready to react you know let me say something stupid like haha I was just joking and get the F out of here or let me begin my attack and that would be ill-advised if he doesn't have his whole OODA loop all caught up where he's now oriented properly and he's observing you properly before he begins his attack. So you may, you know, cause this guy to begin attack before he's really ready to. And guess what? You've already hopped once, so you're in bunny hop mode. And, you know, when he goes to make that move, it's going to be much easier for you to beat him to the punch. Especially now when you see the shoulder, you see the weapon start coming forward. But instead of just coming directly in front of you, now he's got to turn and bring it on you as he reorients himself to you. So again, uh... These are, these are really good things. It's just too hard really to watch the knees and the hips and still be able to see the shoulder, you know, where the attack and the hand, where the attack is gonna actually come from. So that's why I say, you know, right in this area here, same place you'd wanna shoot him at, you know. Uh, if, you had a, uh, if you had a pistol and you were shooting at him, you know, when you practice on the range, uh, hopefully you're not just sitting in a booth shooting. Hopefully you're, uh, if you're shooting, you're going out to some uh, practical uh, shooting, uh, application or forum or I don't know what I want to call it gallery uh, gallery well you know where you're out there actually moving and shooting drawing and shooting that type of stuff uh, once you can hit a target you know it's time to get out of the booth and get uh, you know in front of the uh, line in an open area and start shooting at those stuff these things only cost like 20 or 30 dollars uh, with bullets you know maybe another 50 dollars nowadays but you know you can get out there once a month for under hundred dollars and get to practice your draws and your moving and your shooting and having to shoot under the uh, under uh, stress, the stress of time of being timed. Yeah. You know? uh, Scott went out to one recently with me, right? And uh, he did real well uh, for his first time out. He did outstanding. Nobody came up and said anything to him about you know like you need to work on this. You need except for me, right? What did yeah. You? And the other dude said something about, oh yeah, because uh, you went into, you did a uh, you did a tactical mag change right. while you're under the clock, and you should have just done a speed reload. Right. So Scott was trying to be nice and keep the tarp clean or something. I don't, <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I kept the uh, kept the magazine in my fingers and reloaded right, right, the other right, one back yeah. in my pocket. Yeah, he did a tactical reload while he was under time when uh, speed reloads were allowed. So somebody said something about that, and then uh, I kind of let him shoot the first four stages, just getting used to everything. Then when he got to the fifth stage, which was by far the toughest stage, you know, I made uh, a little adjustment to his shooting, and then uh, the I think best. he wound up beating my time, the son of a bitch. <laughs> so at least one time, at least at least one time, your best time had to be better than my slowest time. Yeah. I'll say that. Okay. And I had a DNQ on my fifth one because I ran out of uh, bullets because I didn't have but 10-round magazines. So anyways, uh, uh, 
So he actually beat me on two then, at least. So anyways, uh, to get off that little sidebar. Uh, so again, you know, gauge interval by his front foot is what's most important. Gauging the interval by the front foot and looking at his shoulders for when that attack is going to begin. Now again, when you're down here and you're looking here, are you going to see his hands down here? Yeah. Are you going to see his hands behind his uh, uh, behind his back, something like that? Yeah, you're going to see all that. Are you probably going to be able to pick up his knees there in a pretty good uh, focus while you're looking here? Yeah. Are you going to be able to see his head? Of course you're going to be able to see his head. You know, if he makes a big wide-eyed move before he throws his attack, some guys do that. Uh, some guys open their mouth like that, you know, <laughs> uh, and that's when you start bunny hopping. Uh, so anyways, uh, that's telegraphing. Uh, now, telegraphing is especially relevant when it comes to the Chinese grip fighter because many are taught how to deploy their knife in a manner where it will not be seen until their attack begins. So you have to watch for the threat uh, to angle towards the strong side of his body uh, so that that's away from us. Uh, and his uh, strong hand will be uh, lowered to a position by the belt line so it will be shielded from our view. And. Uh, uh, this is what the uh, reverse grip fighters often do when they're deploying their weapon before attacking. Uh, this does make it easier for us to counter because the knife now has a long way to go to get to us. And what we'll be doing is we'll be flanking his non-knife side. And because we know what the angles look like from a, uh, from a uh, reverse grip knife fighter, uh, you know that they're best over here and they're not too good from over here. So if you're stepping this way, and he's a reverse uh, grip knife fighter, he's gonna have huge problems getting effective angles on you. And uh, while he's got those weak angles, this is gonna give us time to uh, deploy our knife if we don't have it out already, or to begin our defense uh, while attempting to maintain uh, uh, imminent contact distance if we don't want to engage. 